نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Proceeding with our basic Arabic grammar sessions, today we will be talking about the imperfect verbs in the Arabic grammar. The imperfect verb is known as muzare in Arabic and it has and it carries the meaning for the present tense and the future tense. So it will be a single verb which we will translate While we are doing the word-to-word translation, we will have two meanings that this work or this job is being done in the presence, in the present, and it will be similarly done in the future also. So this is an imperfect verb. Now the pointers, how do we identify and how do we recognize which verb is an imperfect verb? The pointers are that at the start of the verb, we will have any one of these four. Alif, Ta, Ya, and Noon. Any one of these four at the start of a verb will mean that this is a muzare or it is an imperfect verb. The key word for remembering all these four is atain, alif, ta, ya, noon. Okay, now I will explain that what do these different words, uh, alphabets when they come at the start of a word, what do they mean? And what would be the translation for each one of them? Like when there is alif at the start of a verb, it refers to what? That I have done it. I, that is a first person singular, I have done that work. When there is ta at the start of the verb, it means that you, the second person, the second person may be singular, may be two, may be plural, but when there is ta at the start of an imperfect word, it means you have done it. You are doing it or you will be doing it in future, okay? You have not done it. I'm sorry, I said I translated it as past tense, but no. When there's ta at the start of a word, it will mean that you are doing it or you will do it. When there is ya at the start of an imperfect verb, it means that they, the third person, The third person may be singular, they may be two, they may be plural, but when there is ya at the start of an imperfect verb, it will mean that they are or they will do that thing. When there is noon at the start of an imperfect word, that will mean that we, we, the first person plural, we have done, we are doing it or we will do this. Now, giving you a few examples, our budu means what? I worship or I will worship. Tar budu, you worship or you will worship. Yar budu, he worships or he will worship. So, nar budu, we worship. Here, I think it's written wrong. It's not ta'budu. The last word is na'budu. We worship or we will worship. So, this is alif, ta, ya, and noon. Like uh, practicing again, asjudu would mean what? I prostrate or I will prostrate. Tasjudu. You prostrate. Yasjudu. He prostrates. Nasjudu, we prostrate. Now, another thing which we need to recognize for the imperfect verb is whether the work which is being done or which will be done in the muzare is being done by a singular, by two, or by plural. Now, the 
indication that this muzare or this imperfect verb or that job is being done by more than two people that is by a plural group of people is wow noon zabarna it is very similar to what we talked about the plural nouns also so when instead of just writing ta'budu we write ta'buduna then ta'buduna will mean what you worship or you will worship but here the you will be meaning not one person not two but it will be meaning what it will be meaning plural masculine for what for the second person and ya'buduna will mean they worship or they will worship but now this they will not mean that it will be one person it will be two people it will be bought it will be more than two they a group of people they worship or they will worship like tasjuduna you more than two people you prostrate you are prostrating yasjuduna they more than two people a group of people they will prostrate so this is that when there is wow noon at the end of an imperfect verb this indicates that that job or that activity is being done by more than two people that is by a plural group of people now this is a list of short words i think we'll do the first half uh, today and leaving the second half for tomorrow's session ia means alone and only ala upon over and above ila means towards ghairu means except or other than illa also means except allah means so that no fi like many times in quran you you find these words so many times in quran fi is in and between min is for and from man is who ma is who mimma is uh, made up of min and ma and it means from and it means whom la means no not and don't lam also means no lan means surely not absolutely not laisa also means not and no and in if it is followed by illa in the same words it also means not and no i very quickly gone through these words but actual mean purpose of giving you these words is with their meanings is that you know what you actually need to cram up these words you just need to repeat them over and over and over again so that when you read the word ia in quran the translation for ia is on the tip of your tongue and it comes automatically to you it comes instinctively to you and remember i'm going to give you a list of like about four of these uh, slides three or four of these slides and you will be learning by heart the translations of these words and you know what when you read the verses of a quran and you are doing the word to word translation when you know the translation of these words these short words some of them being conjunctions some of being the uh, some of them being prepositions and prefix prepositions it will be extremely easy for you to do the word to word translation so i would urge all of you to actually actually cram up all these words which i will be giving you in form of two or three slides fi amanillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antul wahha